Welcome to Amplify, a podcast series by the Association for Accounting Marketing. I am Samantha Nystrom, a content and digital marketing manager with Sigich, and I am your host for today's session. Remember, if you like what you hear in today's podcast, please be sure to like and subscribe to this channel. Joining me today is Eric Myshak. Eric is the shareholder and chief strategy officer at Beach Fleischman and a professional services marketer with over 25 years of executive marketing and business development experience. He has been acknowledged as one of the accounting profession's pioneers of digital marketing and social media. Welcome, Eric. Welcome. Thanks for the invite, Sam. Yeah, of course. I'm so glad you're able to join us. Um, As you know, today we're going to be talking about evolving roles as marketers, and we have some really great information to share with our viewers today. So for everybody listening and watching, be sure and stick with us through the end of the episode. So the way that audiences take in information, make decisions, and communicate has changed significantly in the last decade alone. And it falls on organizations to accept the shift and integrate important marketing changes. So as marketing changed, so has the role of marketers, including yours. You started, or not started, but a part of your background was in radio, and I think it evolved into marketing as well. So can you kind of speak to your unconventional path to your role as a CSO? Sure, yeah. Um, The first half of my career, I would say, was in a sales capacity actually selling products. My first job out of college was uh, selling beer for a beer distributor in Buffalo, New York, which I always say everything I learned about sales, I learned at that beer distributor. Um, I really enjoyed that job. From there, I actually got into media, uh, specifically radio, and I had various roles in radio from an account executive, which is really selling um, uh, marketing campaigns and airtime um, to sales management, uh, I did some copywriting, actually did some producing of commercials and things, and some on-air type um, work. And I really enjoyed that. I liked the freedom of it and um, the creativity of it. When I got into, um, I'll say, financial services marketing, I started at a bank uh, in the Northeast. And although it was more of a um, complex process of of marketing and sales. It was, um, sales cycles were much longer. Um, The the subject mastery took me longer to learn or, you know, the the content. But I did see that um, it was a very fulfilling career and that kind of uh, led into accounting, accounting marketing. And I think like most marketers who might be listening, I, I basically started off as a marketing coordinator or specialist um, at a firm in Buffalo. I I did that for about five years and got promoted to a marketing manager um, for that same firm. And I think I maybe held that that role for um, another two years, then got promoted to director of marketing and had that for about three years. Then I actually moved to Arizona for the uh, firm that I'm at now, which is Beach Fleischman, more a top 200 firm. Uh, my former firm was a top 100 firm. And uh, when I joined Beach Fleischman seven years ago, I joined as a chief marketing officer. And I had that job and role for um, about five and a half years, uh, both a CMO and a shareholder. And then about a year and a half ago, um, we were updating our strategic plan. And it was a bold plan and it was going to fundamentally transform you know, what we look like um, today and what we're going to need to look like in the future. So the stakes were very high. And one of the concerns from the partner group here um, was that we have so many strategic initiatives and there's so much change on the table. How are we going to monitor that? How are we going to drive that? Who's going to be accountable? And I, I sort of raised my hand and self-selected and said, I want to be the person who manages that, that plan. And so I actually proposed to my partner group of transforming my role from CMO to chief strategy officer. And so right you know, today, I work um, pretty closely with my uh, CEO and my COO and the department heads on making sure the plan gets implemented. And those are both the short-term plan in the long-term strategic plan for the firm. So it sounds like you've had a lot of marketing roles and I'm sure it's changed from what 
the role of a traditional market is. So how would you define the role of a marketer today as opposed to one maybe a decade ago? Right, I think, well, even a decade ago for me, I was pretty comfortable with just promoting the firm I work for. And, you know, uh, if you go back to college, there's four Ps in the marketing mix and that was promotion, which is where I think most marketers are, are comfortable with that element right there. And, uh, and I think that's what most firms understand marketing is. But there are three other Ps in marketing and I slowly evolved from not only doing promotion of the firm, but digging into the other three Ps. So product and service development and launching new business lines, for example. Um, pricing is one of the four Ps of the marketing mix. And so here at Beach Fleischman, um, we're transforming the way we price really uh, gets, down, gets down to the, the very nature of our business model. So pricing and leading that charge and that change at our firm. Um, place, which is really about distribution channels, which is where does our brand extend to? How are we gonna deliver our services? So I think in today's modern context that involves a lot of technology. So I started getting involved in these other areas and that's where I think the modern marketer is today. Um, the marketer today is really involved in the entire client experience continuum from marketing message to interest in the firm to engagement to um, positioning the firm to discussing value to proposing on work to conducting you know needs assessments and those types of things client service delivery loyalty and satisfaction and I think that's where the modern day marketer's head is right now. And a lot of that does evolve around technology, um, but it's essentially, it's about being a customer advocate. So today's modern marketer and firm is really the advocate for the customer. Um, and that's how I think everything has changed. You know, some sectors view marketing as more of an overhead, kind of a less strategic function limited to brand and communications, so more as a cost rather than an investment. Um, right. This has changed? I think it's up to us to change that perception um, because I don't think it's typical for firms to come to that, own, to that conclusion that um, marketing is more than that. I think most marketers tend to be put in a box at their firm. And that's only because I think it's, you know, sometimes we're, we're comfortable and we just accept that, but it's our job as marketing leaders to both inform and educate not only customers about the value of our services, but what our role is as marketers and what marketing actually is. So, I mean, I believe marketing touches every aspect of the firm and every aspect of the business. So I have a much broader view of marketing. Um, and like I said, you know, if you really believe that marketing is about those four P's, which it is, then it's, you know, your worldview is much bigger. Um, the only thing I would say is if you make that case that marketing is much more than just promotion and, you know, PR and brand, um, then you better be prepared to get more involved in the firm. Um, so that's what I did essentially was to say, you know, I should be involved in pricing. I should be, um, you know, reforming the way we do business model. I should be helping to launch new products and services because that's the domain of the marketer. So if you make that case, you have to get outside your comfort zone and, you know, take a hold of those areas and, and start getting to work. So, um, but it's good, you know, when you do that, then you're seen in a, in a different light. Um, because you're helping make other people in the firm successful. Um, you're helping drive innovation and change. And so um, that's what I see marketing is today. And uh, I think a lot of marketers are realizing that a lot of firms are coming to that realization that with all the change happening out there, that that is basically marketers are being called on more and more to help drive that change. Now, as a follow-up to that, for someone who may be you know, a young professional going into the marketing world to help drive that change and 
being so new to the industry, what advice would you give them? I think it'll never fail you if you, your mindset is on the same side of the customer. So a marketer can really help drive change by having that perspective consistently and being the voice of the customer in the room. And even though you're an employee of the firm, as long as you've got that customer in mind, you know, things will kind of take care of itself. So um, you have a different perspective than I would say most in the industry, most accountants, um, and maybe this is a generalization because not all of them certainly don't think this way, but most accountants are very internally focused. They're focused on input. They're focused on you know, what's in front of them. A marketer can help expand worldviews um, and to get people to think more about the customer. So that's, that, that's the advice I would give marketers is really understanding the customer journey and how that journey impacts the way we need to do business compared to the way we do it today. And um, if you really can wrap your head around that, you can be a change agent within your firm. And if you're a change agent, then you're really impacting, impacting that change and you're impacting the way we do business. And that's, that'll get you a seat at the table. Yeah, that's great advice. I okay. have yeah. a background in psychology and I think that helped because it's kind of getting into the psyche of the customer or the client. And I think that's definitely great advice. Right. Um, you touched on this a little bit, but how did technology kind of play in that role of the change in the role of a marketer to date? And how do you kind of envision it playing a role moving forward? Marketers inherently understand technology because we, we experiment with it. Um, oftentimes we're way ahead of the curve. We're either innovators or early adopters when it comes to technology. So it's, it's, it's a space that we understand um, I can think back 10, 15 years ago when the web was really coming of age, the dot coms came around, and then social media eventually. Marketers on the forefront of really experimenting with that and the impact of you know, those technologies and platforms on business and how it was going to fundamentally change business. So we're not intimidated by technology, we understand it. and with all the disruption that's happening now in our profession and other industries, um, I think we're often looked at now as one of the key leaders or voices of you know, this term digital transformation, which is out there, and I believe in it too, but um, how we actually deliver value to customers is changing. A lot of that is wrapped up in technology, um, not all of it, but a, you know, a significant amount of this disruption that's happening um, is wrapped around technology. And we hear things about continuous auditing in the future, um, artificial intelligence and automation. And these are things I think that marketers understand. And so um, we can help, help our practice leaders, we can help our executives at our firm um, really grasp subject and um, that's a good place for us to be because we've always been looked at as the innovators the risk takers and so I think you know the future firm is custom made for us as a profession so I think we're going to be well off and when you say innovators and risk takers at what point do you cut off that line of this is where I take a risk and this is where I don't take a risk. How do you identify those places where you can be a little risky? I think you have to plan and you have to set goals. You have to think about unintended consequences of taking risks. You have to identify those things. Um, so oftentimes in our firm, when we're, we are taking a risk, we actually will set out to say, if we're successful, how are we gonna know it? What's that gonna look like? What should we write those things down? If we're not successful, what are gonna be the symptoms of that? Um, is it declining profits? Is it employee turnover? Is it, you know, 
increased client attrition rates, those are bad things. So I think it's just a matter of identifying the good and the bad and the unintended consequences and monitoring your progress um, and kind of sticking to it. So can't be afraid to take risk. Um, similar to the way investment advisors look at portfolios, I mean, we want to distribute our risk. We want to get involved in different areas. We want to take some significant risk because we understand we are going to fail. We probably fail more often than we succeed. But when we do succeed, those are going to be home runs. And those are going to be the things that really impact the way we do business and deliver value to clients. So that's my perspective on risk taking. Smart perspective. Always be prepared and take smart yep. action when you're taking a risk. So that makes sense. Um, okay, my last question to you is, what do marketers need to keep in mind as we go into a new decade? We're on the cusp of a new year, and with the new decade upon us, there's going to be a lot changing. So what do we need to keep in mind? I think we need to make change, and I think we're good at this, make change accessible for our, our coworkers. And accessible meaning, let's not make it a scary thing. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about it in the context of opportunity. Changes can be very fearful, and you can either use fear or you can use optimism to sell change. I think marketers are inherently optimistic. So the reason why that's important is because I certainly know like in my role, I, my role has morphed into more of a facilitator um, and a facilitator of change. So that would be, I think, something that marketers should keep in mind is that you need to become proficient at facilitating change and selling change as an idea and the importance of change. So those skill sets are very important. Thinking big picture, understand, understanding the implications of not changing mm -hmm. versus you know, taking risks and changing. So keeping your eyes toward the future, keeping your eyes focused on the customer having a full vision of a complete playing field as opposed to just very narrow area of promotion of the firm. Um, that would be the advice I would give marketers. And I think, uh, you know, AIM's doing a good job at really um, promoting that mindset and that vision for the profession. So, um, and that takes time. I mean, people shouldn't expect that they're gonna have those skill sets at the beginning of their career. But it should be something I think that they work for. And whether they gain that knowledge on their own or they gain it from um, surrounding themselves with peers from other firms or just maybe even outside the profession, they should find whatever works for them um, and, and stick to that. And I think uh, if the marketer can do that, then they'll be well off in the future. I'm so ready to take pen to paper and start putting all my actions into place now. <laughs> That's inspiring words. Um, just, I think one last follow-up question to that is, you know, you kind of touched on kind of get out there and, um, you know, plan for those risks and kind of get out of your comfort zone. What advice would you give to people, again, maybe who are starting out and building their network and um, getting out of their comfort zone to do so? Yeah, I would say if you have an idea of where you want to head or what your career, um, what you want your career to look like, Seek out those people who have done it and people who have um, some history behind them in terms of success and challenges and surround yourself with those people. And that's certainly what I did. Um, I think, uh, you know, I, I don't know that people are necessarily self-made without, you have to be curious in the sense that you need to get perspective from other people and situations um, so you have to be inherently curious, I think, to grow and expand, not only personally, but professionally. And some of that curiosity means that you're going to seek people out, you're going to find mentors, you're going to find coaches, and <clears throat> those people are going to give you something that is going to add to your career, um, your career path. And uh, sometimes that's hard to really think about and, and measure. But um, I mean, there, I have a few people in my life that uh, have made this huge impact on where I am today. Um, and it's varied. But uh, I recommend that for a lot of marketers is to um, 
to reach out to other people and uh, build those relationships. I think people are always willing to help somebody earlier in their career and to give them perspective um, because it's a satisfying it's a satisfying activity to be able to do that. And it's a win-win on both sides. Yeah, I, I like your point. Don't reinvent the wheel. Don't try to do anything on your own. Find people who are successful and have them help you through it. Right, and you, you know, you'll end up putting your own spin on things, and that's mm -hmm. where a lot of the original thought will come from, or the innovation. It's pulling bits and pieces and lessons from other people and what they've done, and then thinking about how would I approach this. But basically, um, you know, you're a, um, you're a, it's like life, lifelong learning kind of thing, and I believe in that. I believe in being a student of the profession, so you're constantly learning, constantly looking at things differently. So, uh, and that mindset will serve people well. Yeah, that's great advice. I'm so ready to preach this to all my teammates right now. So thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for joining us, Eric. You've shared definitely a lot of great information to how the role of marketers has changed and how important we are to the core of a successful business. So. I appreciate your time again. Thank you, Samantha. Well, this wraps up another episode of Amplify. Please watch for another podcast from the Association for Accounting Marketing next month. And don't forget, you can always let us at AAM know what topics you would like to hear about next. And you're welcome to connect with us on individually on LinkedIn. We look forward to it. Power up, listening. We're always aiming.